Hi everyone, this is D Keys, bringing you a druid build guide for raids. A druid who focuses on healing can be very valuable to raid teams. While your personal DPS is not going to be that great, the fact that you are primarily healing and buffing means that your raid team can focus on their DPS and other roles. The goal of your rotation is to spend as much time as possible in celestial avatar form, which has superior healing and buffing capability. While some teams may prefer having a subgroup in its, by itself in a squad, I recommend putting the druid in a group with low offensive buffs. Otherwise, your spirit buffs and spotter may end up prioritizing your pet instead of other players, depending on proximity, and your receiving boons from other players will probably have a stronger effect than yet a few more seconds of overflow on someone else, especially if that boon happens to be prot, regen, or aegis. This is especially important if you happen to be doubling as a tank for your group, though I would recommend for most groups to simply have a dedicated healer and a dedicated tank so that you can better distribute grace of the land. For traits, I recommend skirmishing, nature magic, and druid. Ultimately, this build is low enough damage that the effects of extra boons for your party and pet will be more useful than damage modifiers for yourself, such as what you'd get from march marksmanship. In skirmishing, Trapper's expertise will reduce the cooldown of and increase the efficacy of your healing spring heal, or if you choose to use a different heal, take sharpened edges instead for that very slight damage boost. At the master level, Spotter is an unquestionably great choice, buffing your party with 150 precision so that they can do better DPS. Then finally, at the Grandmaster tier, Quick Draw has great synergy with both your staff and your Celestial Avatar skills, so it can help you be a better healer and better buffer. Minor traits are somewhat useful, granting swiftness on weapon swap, Fury on weapon swap in case your party buffs are low, and depending on your positioning, just barely increasing your damage a little bit. In Nature Magic, I usually recommend taking Allies Aid for that free search and rescue in case you need to res someone in a very sticky situation. Though Bountiful Hunter can be very useful um, in a more DPS oriented build if you need to squeeze out that much power and if you feel like you're not going to be resing people all that often. Instinctive Reaction it sounds like it could be good with that power based on healing power, but since healing power starts at zero, you're really not getting that much power, and your primary weapons, staff, and celestial avatar form don't really have a lot of damaging skills. At the master level, Vigorous training can be useful for a little bit of vigor for your group. So if you happen to be using a Warhorn on swap, Windborn Notes is a very solid choice as well for that recharge reduction and for that extra regen, which will be super powerful with all of that healing power you're stacking. At the Grandmaster level, Nature's Vengeance is an amazing choice, giving your Frost Spirit the ability to grant might to your party and your Sun Spirit the ability to grant vigor. Now some of the party or er, classes that are popular in raids, namely Elementalists and Revenants, benefit from having more boons on them depending on their build, so this can be a great synergy with other classes. The miners in Nature Magic help, of course, buff you a little bit more, but also really helps buff your pet to keep your damage up just a little bit more. It's highly likely with this build that your pet may very well be doing more damage with you, so allowing it to share that might, fury, and other boons you get with it boosts that damage. And of course, boon duration is always a great thing for you. Uh, you have a lot of regen to give with your skills, so it really synergizes well with the build. Of course, Druid is pretty central to this build. At the Adepts tier, Primal Echoes can be really useful since you spend a lot of time in staff, and so this will help reduce the cooldown on those skills. Though Cultivated Synergy is also very great for burst heals. You have 
an amazing amount of healing power, so this further buffs the amount of group healing you can do if your party or if your squad is in pretty poor shape. There aren't a lot of conditions in raids, so druidic clarity isn't exactly a great choice. At the master level, I typically use Verdant Etching for the glyph cooldown reduction. Though, if you find that you aren't running any glyphs, the other choices, either Natural Slide for per Stride for that cripple reduction, or Celestial Shadow for super speed, can be pretty useful. And then finally, at the Grandmaster level, Grace of the Land is an amazing trait, giving you the ability to buff everyone in your squad to have up to a 15% damage modifier that contributes to both their direct damage and their condition damage. For gear, I recommend a mix of Magi's and Cleric's armor, weapons, and trinkets. Specifically, I have Magi's armor, Magi's weapons, and Cleric's trinkets, where available, as well as a Celestial back piece. To further maximize my healing power, I have hopped into World v. World and grabbed some healing infusions, just for a little bit more healing power without too much of an investment. On my armor, I use Superior Runes of the Monk for that additional healing power and that 10% outgoing heal effectiveness. You can get Runes of the Monk by spending AC tokens. On my weapon, I recommend a Superior Sigil of Water, though su Superior Sigil of Transference is an acceptable option as well. The rationale behind this is that while I'm in staff, my heals aren't that great, but my party might still need as many heals as I can put out. So instead of the multiplier of Transference, the additive bonus of Water would be more of a benefit to my party. My secondary sigil is a Superior Sigil of Nullification to help with wound stripping particularly at the Veil vale Guardian on the Blue Guardian, as well as the adds at Chorus of All. Now, if you really don't feel like you need that superior sigil of nullification, a sigil of renewal, a sigil of transference, or another kind of healing sigil would be an appropriate choice there as well. For other weapons, a very useful swap is Axe Warhorn for that additional blast finisher, and for that self-buffing and a little bit of soft CC on Axe, though I rarely ever find the need to swap off of Staff just because I can always use that healing on someone. Alternatively, you can use a Longbow for the CC on Longbow 4, as well as a little bit more damage, though I would really just recommend sticking to a more defensive setup and healing so that your group can DPS. So instead of using Zealot's armor, which I know is very popular, I would still go with the Magi's just because there really isn't a difference in your DPS with a Staff and Celestial um, Avatar form build, just because your base coefficients are so ridiculously low. Now if you happen to be tanking, you could instead mix in some Nomads just for that additional toughness and vitality, so that when you are taking it so much hate, you will be able to maintain uh, your own safety and maintain some heals on everyone else. Now note that with the recent change to energy generation while in combat, in that you don't gain that energy if you're healing an already full health ally, I've actually found it kind of useful to go stand in AoEs so that I can damage myself and thus heal myself to regen that energy. So that's another reason why you may want to choose Magi's and Cleric's over zealots in some places. For food, rice balls are amazing with that extra healing power and that 10% healing modifier. And ferocious tuning crystals stack yet more healing power on you just to increase that to the highest level so that you can heal when people need it as much as they need it. If you aren't interested in using rice balls, you can always use Kraka chocolate bars or saffron mango ice cream, which also boost your healing power. There are a lot of pet choices that complement this build. My favorite is the Bristleback with its high survivability and amazing damage for a pet. Now note, since it's ranged, you might have to finagle its movement with your F3 and F1 so that it's in range of your squadmates buffs 
so that in case there happens to be even more spillover boons, it will get some of those. If the toughness from the bristleback seems to be causing aggro problems, you can always go back to cats. Juvenile Jaguar, as well as, well as the Lynx, are great for fully offensive options, while the Jungle Stalker is great for stacking might, and the Noon Tiger is also great for stacking fury if your party seems to be lacking those buffs, say if they happen to split up to kill some adds. If you want pets with more healing capabilities, I'd recommend the Juvenile Fern Hound, which will provide a little bit of regen for your team, and the Blue Moa, which has a heal and a 40 second cooldown, which will help a little bit, as well as a little bit of prot from its activated skill. For slot skills, I usually use Healing Spring, either Glyph of Empowerment or Glyph of the Tides, Sun Spirit, and Frost Spirit. And my Elite usually swaps between Entangle for some bosses or Strength of the Pack. Though if you happen to be in a group that isn't doing so well, Spirit of Nature is amazing for its res. Or if you happen to be tanking, Glyph of Unity will help you maintain the HP of all of your allies while you are healing yourself just because you're under increased pressure. Now Entangle seems like a weird option, but the Immobilize is great for helping chip at break bars, as well as keeping adds in place so that you can burst them down quickly without them moving out of your melee's attacks. Other options, um, if your party needs to have a little bit more prot is of course Stone Spirit for all of the prot you get from its base as well as its pulse spoon. Or even sometimes on trash runs I'll take Glyph of Equality so that I have a group stun break in case there happens to be a lot of add pressure. And of course Search and Rescue is great for resing people who happen to down in silly locations that you don't really want to dive into even with your toughness and vitality. As I previously mentioned, your primary weapon for this build is Staff. Solar Beam is a lot like a Mesmer Greatsword auto attack, except it deals very, very little damage and heals your allies. So when using it, you want to position yourself so that you have as many allies as possible between you and the boss. Aspectoral Wisp is very good damage and is very useful for keeping your party mates topped off. So if everyone seems to be doing well, what I typically do when I first swap into Staff is cast Astral Wisp just to get that quick draw proc, as well as deal a little bit of damage and help everyone either maintain their Scholar buffs if they happen to be using it, or start regening Astral energy. Ancestral Grace is an evade, a blast finisher, and just a really great way to get around, and also is quite a good burst heal with all of that healing power. So I typically end up using this at Vale Guardian to get into green countdown circles, though if my party happens to be very low on health, what I will do is blast this into a water field, or even if this is the first skill I use for quick draw, use Ancestral Grace, then a water field either from Sublime Conversion or Healing Spring, and then use Ancestral Grace again in that water field for the blast. It's an amazing amount of healing. Sublime Conversion, in addition to being a water field, will convert any enemy projectiles into healing projectiles. So that means it can take the place of Mesmer Reflex or Guardian Reflex and help keep your party safe. That way the Guardian or the Mesmer can take a little bit more offensive utility. Finally, Vine Surge will immobilize foes, but will also remove conditions on allies that happen to be hit with, by it. On Longbow, if you've seen a DPS Ranger Guide, you're probably familiar with the skills. The ones of note are of course Rapid Fire, which is great for using Quick Draw with a Rapid Fire, then a Barrage, and then a Rapid Fire again, and then your Weapon Swap cooldown is up. You won't be using a lot of stealth, though the swiftness on your pet can be useful, especially with Boon Share. And then Point Blank Shot is pretty good at tinking a good chunk off a break bar. 
Then of course Barrage with its cripple will chip away a little bit at break bars, but it's not nearly as significant as what you'd see from other conditions, or of course point blank shot. On Warhorn, Ricochet will help you stack a little bit of might on yourself. Winter's Bite should be used if you need to chip away at a break bar or slow down an enemy. And Hunter's Call can be used for some decent damage to help charge up your Celestial Avatar form if you aren't in staff and if your squad is pretty well on health. Call of the Wild is of course a blast finisher as well as a very good way to buff yourself and nearby allies. So if you need the biggest heal you can possibly imagine outside of Avatar form, I would start with Ancestral Grace on the people who need help, then wait a few seconds, plop down Sublime Conversion or Healing Spring, and then use Ancestral Grace again, swap to a Warhorn, call the wild, then even after that I would follow up by a heading into Celestial Avatar and using either Celestial Avatar 3, which is a blast finisher, or Celestial Avatar 4, which is a pulsing water field. In Astral form, the auto attack is an AoE heal with a tiny radius. Because of this tiny radius, I do not use the particular option snap ground target to current target. This means that if you happen to be targeting the boss for your great for your staff auto attack, you probably won't be hitting a lot of your allies. Instead, by allowing your heal to move around freely, you can better position it to hit as many people as possible, because the aiming is pretty hard. Ka or the second skill is Seed of Life, which is a delayed heal that cleanses conditions. And since its scaling isn't that great, I typically only use it if someone needs a cleanse. Now, Lunar Impact is of course Blast Finisher, but also a daze, so it's very good for healing. Rejuvenating Tides is a long-lasting water field while you're channeling it. And Natural Convergence is a pulsing cripple and slow, and once that finishes, pulses immobilize. So if I happen to need to immobilize a target for a very long time, I'll swap into Avatar form, then start off with Natural Convergence then use a few healing skills, and then Natural Convergence is back up again, so I can keep an enemy pinned down for a very long time. If my party is in pretty good shape, then I'll typically swap into Celestial Avatar form and start off with four, so that I can pulse Grace the Land on people who are somewhat spread out pretty comfortably, as long as I can be in melee. Or, if I need to break a break bar very quickly, I'll swap into Celestial Avatar and use skill three, then do a couple of minor heals with the auto attack, and then Celestial Avatar number three again, and that's a very good chunk of a break bar, especially if you happen to combo it with Longbow or Entangle. So that's it for now on my Raiding Druid build guide. Everyone, good luck in raids, and I hope you're having a lot of fun figuring out these challenging fights. Thanks for watching!